OCS 25. This is Unit 4, Lecture Part 1. In this lecture, I'm going to cover Chapter 3, Part 2, which entails hardware. Um, we're going to talk about RAM and components inside your PC. So in this chapter, let's start talking about RAM as random access memory. This is used to store things temporarily. RAM is faster than your regular storage, which is your hard drive. And so um, there are different types of RAM. In the table from your notes, you can see that there is RAM, which requires um, power in order to retain the data that's written to it. So when you turn the computer off, the information or the data cannot be retained. Under RAM, you would have SDRAM, SDR, SDRAM, and other type of RAM. So SDRAM is what we call a synchronous dynamic RAM. This is combining static RAM and dynamic RAM. So the common type of memory module that you see in the market, like DDR4, is under the category of SDRAM. And the original SDRAM was a single data rate. That's what SDR stands for. And this is an older type of memory. All your newer memory that you see in the market today is a double data rate, which stands for DDR. And in the double data rate, it writes much faster. So every level of DDR is double the prior level rate. So DDR2 is double the speed of DDR. DDR3 is double the speed of DDR2, which quadruple the speed of DDR. DDR4 is double the speed of DDR3, and so on. And your memory modules are DIMM. This is basically an inline module that is dual. So DIMM stands for dual inline memory module. This pertains to the physical module size and cut for your RAM. That what is what we call a form factor. DIMM is used for your regular desktop PC. So DIMM, which we covered in the first chapter, is small outline dual inline memory module, and this is used for laptop. Make sure that we know these type of RAM for A plus exam, and we need to know that for practical reasons as well. So the important things that we want to take away from this table is that memory module would pertain to, we, when we select memory module, we would consider form factor. So when you're upgrading memory in your computer, we need to take a look at how that physical module would fit as they would pertain to specific double data rate type and if you're using a laptop and you're upgrading your laptop ram you have to look at the size of your memory module which uses so dims compare that to the desktop which uses larger memory module which is dim when you upgrade memory you need to also look at your speed you want to go with the equivalent or higher speed. So we want them to match the existing speed. And if you go slightly higher, it's only going to operate at the slot or the bus that you're connecting the module to. We also need to take a look at memory timing. And this would refer to how the column address stroke or the CAS value is used for that module. 
the on the label you would see that it would be labeled as a CL value or the column value and you want the CL value to be low because the lower the number um, the lower the latency or the delay of how it writes to the location of the memory so CL refers to how quickly the memory column address can be accessed and the lower the CL value, the faster the access for your memory column. And so CL values increase when you are comparing different memory type, but not all memory modules would include the CL value. So you can go to the manufacturer website and you can look up the specification of your memory module to identify your CL values. Another thing that we consider is how the correction can take place or what kind of feature it would include. So some memory module would have error correction, would include ECC, and some doesn't. Now, on third-party website, the manufacturer that sells the memory module sometimes would include some information about the feature or how it would be able to um, correct error. And when you're using the website, when you put in your memory module type, it would then also give you a upgradable options on which module you can utilize to replace or upgrade your existing RAM. So we want to really look at how we would be able to upgrade our memory based on the speed, based on the type, based on the CL values, and the compatibility with your system is how it would be physically connected. So in the first few questions, it asks you about memory module. For the first question, it asks, a client requests you to upgrade RAM on the computer. What important information do you need before beginning the task? You need to consider the memory type of her system, the form factor, the speed, the capability, or the capacity, which is the size that it would be able to store, motherboard information, how it's going to fit on the motherboard, and the existing adapters. So those are the important things that you need to consider. The next question asks you, what is memory CL value and why is it important for the installation? CL refers to how quickly the memory mod, memory column addresses can be accessed. And because the CL value should be low, so that way you would have low latency or delay in accessing that memory column. Now we would go through and we would identify the different types of the double data rate, which is the DDR. So for the first one, you would see that the pin sizes are different here. You would see the notch, which is the cutout in the middle. And the first module, its type is the DDR. This is older, a legacy type. You would see it in an older system. DDR2, as you can see, the cutout is about the same. but you would have double the data rate, so it would be twice as fast. On the third type, which is the DDR3, and DDR3, you would see that the right side have less pins, so the cutout or the notch is gonna be closer to the right, and that is your DDR3. For the DDR4, it's going to have 
On the right side, it's going to have a little bit more pin than the DDR3, but it is double the rate of the DDR3. So the fourth one here is going to be your DDR4. This is what we see in the market today. So the pin size for these are different, and also the rate is going to be different, and this, which means that it's going to be able to access twice as fast as we go from DDR to DDR2 to DDR3 and DDR4. When you compare DDR3 to DDR4, what are some of the improvement in the DDR3 to the DDR4? You would see that DDR4 used less power. You would have more number of pins. As you can see, these are the gold pins. And the improvement in the IO clock rate for the input and output is higher in DDR4 compared to DDR3. So in your notes, it, after it talks about the, the consideration of memory, it goes into different types. And here it also gives you other type of memory that is not just dim. So synchronous RAM is your SD RAM. And SD RAM encompasses your DDR SD RAM, like your DDR 1, 2, 3, and 4. They use dual inline memory module, which are DIMMs, and it's, it's 168 pin and 184 pin. So for A+, we want to make sure we know the pin sizes for the different type of DDRs. Looking at the DIMMs, the DIMMs are physically smaller. That's what we've seen in laptop. And the earlier you also seen the older memory it's also sim which is single inline memory module where it's only going to be writing to the single instead of the dual where it writes across both this one it's going to write to the individual card and here in the chapter you would see different types of ddr as what we just answer on the assignment. So the cutout or the notch is going to be important because it would tell you the pin location, the goal pins, how that would attach to the slot. So you can see that they are different from DDR to DDR4. So the evolution of RAM, you would see that from uh, page three and comparing across as we progress to the later type which is ddr4 you would see that it is um, consuming less power the transfer rate is better so you would see that this is the speed much faster than the prior so it's going to double the rate as we change the technology or improve the technology and your IO clock bus is also better. The pin sizes, the 3 and the 2 are exactly having the same number of pin which is 240 where DDR was 184 and DDR4 has 288 pins for most. Your SODIMs are generally 200 pins. On the newer DDR4 SODIM, it is 260 pins. So this is a good reference table for you to compare the different types of DDR and the pins and its rate. SODIM stands for Small Outline dual inline memory module this is used on the laptop and if you compare dims to so dim dims is longer and has more pins even though the rate is comparable
Here is also another comparison table. It gives you the pins, it gives you the DIMS information, and the characteristics for the I.O. bus. Now on the DDR2, this is the double data rate 2. And this is also uh, an SD RAM, as we talked about. And this tells you the specific in the speed. When you look at the speed, sometimes it will say PC2 or PC. That in the number next to the PC indicates the speed. So when we see PC2, 3200, that will be 3200 megabit per second throughput. That's the transfer rate for the memory module. On the DDR3, this one has the prefetch bus. There's additional improvement in the clock rate. So PC3 refer to DDR3. And that would be the value next to the PC is going to be your speed. So in general, we can say that we would refer to the PC number. That will be your throughput. And that's, we want to go with equivalent or higher uh, for the speed. In this picture, it shows you the CL's latency. And we talk about CL is for the column value, and that would tell us whether how fast or slow, depending on the value. So you want to go with the lower value, so that way there's less delay in accessing the address in that memory column. In DDR4, you would see that sometimes you would. Um, have the L, and L just stands for low voltage. So compare DDR3 or DDR3L, the DDR4 used the least power. It is more reliable and it's faster. So for the DDR4, it has the built-in CRC and parity error checking. So if it writes, if it's unable to write to the memory, it would do the parity check to make sure that it could write. If there's not, it's going to generate an error. And that is going to be part of the error checking ECC support. Now, memory can be single channel or dual channel. On each of the 64-bit DIMMs or so DIM, the module are addressed individually. So it would be best to have the RAM that have enough speed to match the processor speed. So that way it would be able to um, write synchronously at the clock speed of the processor. On the dual channel, which is what you see in our newer memory module, starting with DDR3, uh, DDR2, that we would have identical channel that would be used to control memory or access memory. And so we would always want to pair the module so you would install them in pair as they are dual channel. And so for the dual channel operation, you want to match the pair and the same speed and the CL value for the first pair. And on the motherboard, you would see that it would be color coded so the slots would be paired. Then we have a triple channel RAM where that will be three. So it's designed to triple the speed of the RAM bandwidth. And these would be using two sets of three sockets. So when you look at a motherboard and if you have three memory sockets or three slots, that will be a triple channel RAM 
where you would install three of the comparable the same. And some motherboard would use four socket, but the last socket would not be used. So you would install only on three for the triple channel RAM. Then we have a quad channel, which use two sets of four sockets. And it also uses either dual and triple channel. So it will populate one or both sets with four chips that would be identical. So you would have two pairs or you would have four of the same type of memory. And that would consider quad channel. Now for parity and non parity. Parity checking is part of error checking code, and you want this error correction code. So when the, for the reliability of RAM access, if ECC is implemented, it's able to look at the parity bits and correct if it comes across error. Parity checking is more expensive in the module. So if you have a module that have ECC, you would pay a little bit more than what you have with the module that doesn't have ECC. And the one that have ECC would be more reliable. So it would protect your system from having bad memory or frequent shutoff and losing data. So that's important for critical applications. And when you install ECC, you can enable this feature in your BIOS. And when we did the lab, we look at BIOS. And ECC is recommended for maximum data safety. So we want to use module that has ECC. So in this section on page seven and eight, it talks about how ECC support is helpful. And it's one of those feature that you want to have as memory content could be corrupted. So you want it to use correction code in order to make sure that your, you don't have bad memory that is accessed. So when you install memory, you would pull the lever back and the module would either pop up or slightly prop up. And so on the side, you would then pull the lever for the side of the module and be able to uh, remove or the old module and then install the new module in the, the slots. Please see my other video on how to install components within, including the memory. So for the next few questions, it asks you to compare DDR3 and DDR4. We mentioned that for number four, it uses less power. There's an increased number of pin in the DDR4, and there's improvement in speed and IO clock rate. For five, when we compare between parity and ECC, which technology is recommended for maximum data safety? That will be your ECC because error correction codes allow us to correct data error when it is detected. So you have more reliability for your memory. Now in the picture shows here, we have the memory module and for two, we would have the lever that will be pulled back. And when you install, you want to make sure that it sits upright and then you would, when you push it in, the lever automatically reclose. So that way your memory module is 
intact. If it is loose, when you turn on your computer, it will not start and it will give you a long beep to tell you that the it's not able to access the memory and without the memory, your operating system will not boot. So when you, before you open up and uninstall your memory, you always want to turn off the system, shut off the power, drain the power, make sure we turn the switch in the back off. Then we would open the case and be able to uh, ground ourselves, and then we can re pull the lever to remove the memory module. When you insert a new so memory module into the dim socket, make sure that you pair them and you would press them in place so the lever will pull back and make sure that it is going to be installed tightly, otherwise, you would not be able to. Put. And you don't want to also force it if it doesn't fit. So here it gives you the step on how to do that. Installing storage devices. So we would install optical drives, hard drives, um, or solid state drives. Optical drives are CD, DVD, and Blu-rays. And there are different types of CD-ROM and DVD runs. Optical drives are being obsolete, so you don't see a lot of optical drives in the modern system today, but you do see some system that come with optical drive. And you would use the SATA connection to connect the optical drive. So for CD and DVD, the burnable CD-ROM and the burnable DVDs, it used this that would have what's called pits and lands. This is how you're going to be able to burn data into a disk on the non-label side on the bottom. And these drives use laser to read the data. So the difference between the storage capacity between Blu-ray, DVD, and CD is that the laser wavelengths are different. The shorter the wavelength, the smaller the pits and lands, and that enable basically the data to store in the same space. So the Blu-ray has the highest capacity because it uses blue laser and it has shorter wavelength than the CD or the DVD. The DVD uses red laser, which has longer wavelength than the Blu-ray, but shorter than the CD. So CD-ROM CD -ROM disc has the lowest capacity because it is infrared laser and it has the longest wavelength. So it's able to only store the least out of the three. They are all tray loading. That means that when you press eject, there is a tray that would open and you would be able to load the disk onto the tray. And the tray will be pulled in and the laser would read your disk data. You have CDR, CDRWs. And CDR stands for write once. CARW is, is rewrite, so it's able to rewrite on top of what's been written. And there's different speeds. So 4x is high speed, 12x is ultra speed, and 12 to 24x is going to be ultra speed plus. So ultra speed plus is the best, the fastest. The capacity of CDRW is 700 megabytes. And for the CDR, 650 megabyte, slightly lower. For CDRW32, that's the faster media type. Usually work with slower, but not the other way around. So you're able to use um, 
this disk to the, the drive can go to the faster media type so you can use this disk on the lower the slower drive but you cannot use the slower disk on the faster drive DDR, your DVD R and plus R, they are recordable but not erasable. The RWs are recordable and rewritable. So the capacity compared to the CDR, DVD R is higher, and DVD R is single sided, single layer. The DVR DL is a rewritable but it is similar to the CDR or the DVD-R. The capacity is double what you've seen in the regular DVD-R in that it is 8.4 gigabyte. So here it gives you the distinguished information between your DVD-RW and for the plus RW this is rewritable and erasable media. It is also 4.7 gigabyte. So all of these labels will tell you the type of disk. And when you see the R, the plus R, those are writable but non-erasable. The R the plus RW is writable and erasable. The fastest of the DVDs are going to be the super multi DVD. Those are the drives that are going to be able to be versatile with all DVD media. Now, the DVD RW cannot write onto the DL media because. DL media is single sided and it's non erasable. So, we touch on a little bit difference between Blu ray compared to DVDs and CD. And Blu ray also have different type of discs. Some discs are recordable, the DL stands for dual layer. The RE is recordable and rewritable. The BDXL is going to be um, larger in capacity where it can go up to 128 gigabyte. And not all BDRE is compatible to the Excel standard. So make sure that if you're using Blu-ray and the appropriate type of disk we want to make sure that we check the type of drive and the disk that we use on those drives. For drive speed, your CD 1X is going to be 150 kilobit per second. Now, for the DVD, that will be 1.38 or close to 1.4 megabit per second and the Blu-ray is 4.5. So as you transition from CD, DVD to Blu-ray, you would see that Blu-ray is the fastest and the capacity on the Blu-ray is much higher as far as storage. So years ago, we would then write to your disk using optical drive to burn or record onto the disk. And in the Windows system, sometimes you would see that there's copyrighted protected file. You would use um, a third party type of software in order to burn certain things or write certain thing to this. So in the next question for question six, it asks you what are the differences between three types of optical drives, CD, has the low capacity, it has the longest wavelength laser. DVD has the higher capacity than CD. It uses shorter length wave, shorter wavelength than CD and it uses red laser. Blu-ray has the highest capacity 
It is shortest of the wavelength and it uses blue laser. Question seven asks you what type of DVD drives can read all types of DVD and CD media. That will be your super multi DVD drives. For question eight, what type of SSD provides the fastest performance in desktop PC? That will be the M.2 with PCI X16. And PCI EX16 is PCI Express times 16. So next we're gonna talk about this storage. We will start with hard disk drive. And HDD was common and it still is for operating system and file storage. Hard drives is used to store OS, application, system configuration files, and user data files, such as pictures, images, etc. HDD uses magnetic um, mechanism, so you would have movement parts inside your HDD and over time that can wear and tear which cause the HDD to malfunction. We now mostly use solid state drive where solid state drive is faster it uses flash technology or flash memory and in some cases you also have hybrid SSD HDD drive, which is known as SHDS. And solid state drive is more expensive than your HDD, but it is affordable and the capacity is large. Your solid state drive is smaller. It would be 2.5 inch form factor compared to your HDD on the desktop, you would see they are 3.5 inch, but on the, the laptop, it will be 2.5 inch. And some SSD looks like your memory module, where it would be a set of chips on the integrated circuits um, board. M.2 SSD require PCI Express slot, and currently we're using X16 for PCI Express. It writes faster as it has 16 lanes. So when it's 16 times the speed of what your regular PCI. So here it describes how to install SSD and you would have a cover that would be on covering the slot and then you would be able to um, undo the cover and then slide it in it would detach similar to what you've seen with other adapter where the pin would touch the bus or the socket after you physically install the ssd you would then need to go to the BIOS and make sure that the configuration is acknowledged in the system. If not, you have to uh, either flash the BIOS or reset the, the BIOS so that way it can recognize your drive, but that's rare. So the pictures here shows that you can um, remove the location where that HD um, is mounted on a laptop. On the MSATA, which uses Mini PCI Express, this is used on laptop and desktop. It is a different form factor than your M.2. So M.2 is smaller compared to MSATA and but they are they both use pci express now some solid state comes as a card where it looks like a memory module or something close to an adapter 
card so then you would simply mount it to the slot or if it is for the m.2 you would insert it to the m.2 location as seen in the picture here on page 15. Now the X1, which is a smaller slot, this is often used for small adapter like, like wireless or other Ethernet adapter, etc. The PCI Express X16, you would see that there's a clip and it is a longer slot. This is often used for video adapter or other type of adapter that requires PC Express X16. So when you buy the adapter, make sure that it is compatible for the bus that you attach it to. There are two types of SSD. One is going to be your MLC, which is multi-level cell, and the other is single-level cell SLC. The multi-level multi cell is lower in performance. It is lower than your SLC. Almost all your SSD that's sold in the market is MLC flash memory. So if you want better performance, you can look for SLC, but that is a little bit more rare. SSD use a feature called trim, and this basically just deallocate the space of the deleted files. So that way it would be making that space available for reuse. Trim is important to free up the space as it would your, your files normally write across different areas. So it would be dynamically written. So when you delete a file, it would gather up the free space that would be scattered and then put them all together for the reuse of new files. Now, when we integrate SSD, if we want to use the M.2, we just want to make sure that there is a location on the motherboard for that adapter for our SSD. And it looks like a RAM chip. The motherboard needs to be designed to accept M.2. And it is very common in today's new motherboard. Your solid state hybrid drive is SSHD. And this combines the magnetic capacity and the solid state. It's a hybrid. So compared to the HDD, it is faster, but it is not as fast as the SSD. Now, it would be more affordable than the solid state drive, also depending on the supply and demand in the market. You also see drives, SSD drive that uses NVMe. And NVMe stands for Non-Volatile memory, uh, memory Express. That means that it would retain data even when your power is removed, and that's what non-volatile means. So NVMe is not a physical factor like M.2, but NVMe is a protocol that's used for SSD and it is used to allow data to bypass the bottleneck. So on the HDD, you often see that bottleneck as it's written to the disk. So for configuration of NVMe, we would use BIOS or UEFI to be able to specify the feature for our drive. And NVMe is supported in Windows, Mac, OS, Linux, and Chrome. So for the next few questions, we can say that the type of SSD that provides the fastest performance in the desktop PC for number 8 is your M.2 PCI Express X16. 
And the function as for trim is to deallocate space that was used by the deleted file for the new file. So that way that space can be reused. In hard disk drive, your HDD, the traditional drive, what you see is that there are different interface or connection type for the drive. SATA 2.5 refers to 2.5 inch size drive. And this is found in laptops. Whereas your desktop uses SATA 3, which uses SATA, which uses 3.5 inch HDD. So 2.5 inch refer to the spin platters inside the HDD, so the physical platters for that drive. Now the drive is connected to the motherboard using SATA connection and on the connector you would see the L shape. Some motherboards support more drives than other. Usually standard you would see about four connection for SATA but not always, sometimes just two on the smaller motherboard. Magnetic HDD uh, uses one or more double-sided platters, and these platters are round spinning platters that, would, um, that you would see. It is sealed inside the enclosure, and so it is airtight. Each of the sector is 512 bytes in the storage. So it would use the sector size to be able to determine the complete capacity of your disk. External hard drive uses USB, but inside the external hard drive, it is simply your hard disk. And it would transfer data using USB instead of the SATA cable directly connecting to the motherboard. So it would connect the motherboard externally using USB. The spin rate of your drive, your HDD, your hard disk drive is called RPM, revolution per minute. And so for the low performance drive, you, you would see it as 5400. For the mid performance is 7200 and the high performance is gonna be uh, 10,000 RPM. So inside your hard disk drive, it would look something like this. So a sector is a portion of the rectangular piece here. Looks like a pie piece, but that will be the top part here in red. The track is the complete circle here in yellow. And the cylinder is the that, that would be vertical. So your disk have the read and write head and this never touches the platter. Okay, so on the platter, we would have a sector, which is the smallest unit for storage on the, on the hard drive. The track is the, the circular and it's a group of sectors. And then your cylinder is the set of platter. So the table gives you the difference in the RPM for different disks and the performance level. In the following picture, it shows you different types of drives, starting with your laptop SSD to your um, desktop and your DVD. In your hard disk, there's a section of storage that would be used for cache. And cache is used to hold information that would be reused. So on the higher performance drive, you would see a large section for cache. And that in, in general is gonna be um, better than having lower 
section for cash, which is for the lower performance drive. And we touch on hybrid drive, your SSHD and your solid state drive would use this flash memory. But flash memory is also used in your um, secure digital card or your micro SD and also your USB storage. Flash memory is able to retain content without power. So it is non-volatile. It does not have any moving parts. It is durable, but it doesn't always last forever. Standard flash memory uses in digital media players, memory cards, camera, devices, USB thumb drives, and so on. Here shows you different types of um, storage, including compact flash, SSD, memory sticks, etc. And the table provides the category and the capacity and the difference or the use. In the drive configuration, you sometimes see RAID, which is redundant array independent disk. This is a group of disks that's used to store backups or data. There are multiple level of RAID. So RAID level zero is it's going to use at least two drives. And when it writes, it stripes across both drives. And so for RAID level one, RAID level one is a mirror type and you would have at least two drives. So drives can be configured as RAID and there's different RAID levels. Zero is gonna be fast and it uses a method called striping to, to be able to uh, write the data across both disks. RAID level one is a mirror type where you use two drive. One drive would mirror the exact data, copy the exact data onto the other drive. So the downside of this is that you're only going to get 50% of the capacity if you're using RAID one. So if I have two drive, each drive is a copy of another. That means that your, my capacity is at 50%. RAID level 5 uses three or more drives. Um, it's different than the other one in that it does parity check. And the data is spread across all drives. So when you have one drive that's down, the other two is still usable. RAID level 10 is 1 and 0 combined. And in RAID level 10, you would use four drives. It stripes and mirror the data. This is going to give you reliability and speed. 10 is often used in business or enterprise environment. So on uh, page 20, you would see RAID information for a different level. Make sure that you know this will come to your A+. Plus. So in the question 10 asks you to identify the types of RAID. And as we just discussed, we have RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's also RAID level 6, but it is not as common. So 0 has two drives, it stripes data. RAID 1 uses at least two drives, it would use mirror or copy duplicate data. RAID 5 uses three or more drives, it stripes and does parity check. RAID 10 stripes and mirror, it gives you 
fast performance, and reliability for data. So in the next section, it talks about how you can use data RAID. And when you physically connect the data to the motherboard, if it supports RAID, you can configure. And so here, when you see hot plug, that means that you can plug the drive in while the system is on. Now RAID, it would have a feature for firmware that would support RAID and the motherboard needs to be compatible with RAID. So not all motherboard and drives would be RAID compatible. So for more information, you would refer to those pages and it also shows you how to configure RAID drive on um, On the, on the system. So hot swappable drive, like I said, you can use USB external drives, SATA, drive flash, memory drives, or other type of drives. In Windows, you can eject the drive and like your USB, you would click the icon and it would eject the media so you can safely remove it. On Mac OS, you would use Finder and click the arrow for the drive. So that way you can disconnect the drive. And I'm going to conclude the part one of my video. Um, in the next part, I will talk about motherboard form factor. That means that we're going to go into motherboard specific information and size. So please watch my next video.